Okay, here's our block diagram of our process for Lab 8. Up in the top left corner, we've got our pump with our tank and the level sensor and the fill valve. In the top middle, you've got the PLC which controls everything. Down towards the bottom, we've got our conveyor and our conveyor motor. Our jar is coming in. The gate holds the jar at the fill station. You've got your box packer and your packing box. Everything all set up here. So we look in the top left-hand corner. You've got your tank and your fill process. The pump is connected to a variable frequency drive so you can vary the speed of the pump and the pump rate. We have our level sensor which will vary from 0 to 1023. 0 being empty and 1023 being the tank full. You will scale that in your program from 0 to 100. Over on the right hand corner you have your inputs for start and stop of the process and you also have your tank fill set point knob below those and you will set that knob from 0 to 100 percent. The PLC will read that as 0 to 1023 and again you will scale that back to 0 to 100 percent. Back on the tank area you have a fill valve which is controlled by the PLC and that valve is energized, it's open, and filling the bottle. Down in the lower left hand corner you have your conveyor motor that's controlled by the PLC. You've got the uh, turn the motor on, the conveyor runs. Turn it off and the conveyor stops and the whole process stops. You have a gate valve down there that when energized allows the jar to leave the filling station and enter in the packing area. You've got a box packer when that energized it swings in and pushes all 12 of those uh, bottles at once into the packing box. From there the packing box is handled by another station and that's not part of this lab. To start the process you'll energize the system, start the conveyor up, and then you'll start filling the uh, bottles. You've got your fill time, you've got your gate time, and that process runs con constantly. Separate from that is your tank filling. You, the process will look at the level sensor and control the speed of the variable frequency drive, actually con control the speed of the pump by varying the inputs to the variable frequency drive. Now the pump full speed is 60 hertz, half speed is 30 hertz, quarter speed would be 15 hertz, and then we drop even down to 8 hertz to, uh, for the very slow speed. The higher the tank is, the slower the pump will run so you don't overflow the, uh, the fill process on the tank. Next we're going to go on and we're going to take a look at the PLC program section by section. The first will be the acquisition of the analog data and scaling it and converting converting it and then using that data to create your fill set point. And then once we have our fill set point we can control the speed of our pump based on that. Next section is the jar filling where you have your timing of your fill station and open and closing of that gate. And then the final section is the box packer. We've got the program here and I'm introducing a few new concepts to you and one of them is the subroutine call. I've created two subroutines, one called scale2 for scaling the two input, the analog inputs, and the other one is average8. And what I did is I'm averaging my input values to create a more consistent value and we'll look at that a little bit later. But for the first we're going to do is we'll look at uh, scale 2. When it gets to this instruction it will call a program called scale 2. If you look over here in program blocks you'll see that I created another routine, another program. We have our main average 8, AVG 8, and now scale 2. 
I have it already loaded up here in the tab. So I'm going to click on this tab. And there's some programs. This looks like another ladder program. It looks like any other program. And what it will do is the PLC will transfer control to this program, start executing at the first rung work its way through when it's done with its rungs and there are no other additional rungs to process it will return right back where it picked up so it will return to the next rung here which is rung 6 and then call average 8 when average 8 completes it will return back down here to rung 8 and then start processing from there so let's go back and look at scale 2 and what it does, it goes out and reads the analog input, which is tank level. That's our input. And our input low has a range of 0. And the input has a high value of 1023. And our output will then range from 0 to 100. So it will do the scaling necessary to fit everything within a 0 to 1020, I mean 0 to 100 with our 0 to 1023 inputs. So let's take a look and see how that works. I have it zero now, and my output is zero. I will raise that up, and 512 is the halfway point between 1023 and zero. So I'll try and get that, and you see it's scaling my output. My output there is scaled at 50. So you see 516, and that's being scaled to 50. If I go all the way up to 1023, my output is 100. Bouncing right there between 99 and 100. So we can bring it down, and that makes it nice for us because we, now we can work with values of 0 to 100. And we do the same thing there for the set point. We take our analog, our tank set point, we read that, and we're scale right now. That's set to 50%. Next thing I do is we come in here, we convert those values from integer values into floating point values because we will be doing some math on those when we return. We come back to our main, and we go to our average. We're going to skip that right now. We're going to come in here, we have our floating point tank level and our floating point set point. So this is our tank level where we're currently at. I'm going to drop that down. And our tank level is at 22, our set point is 50, and that makes our process level about 44% full. I'm going to raise that, try and get that as close as I can to 25. There we go and you see we are now at a tank fill at 50 percent. If I drop this down to 12, we should be at a tank fill of 25 percent of our set point. And get that down there about 12 and a half. There we're, we're very close. We're at 24 percent. So 12 and a half would get us to 25. And I don't know if we can... Uh, it jumps too much for us. Okay. And what we're not seeing is the output of our divisor, of our division here. Output of our division is going to be a fractional number. The PLC then multiplies it by 100 so that we can use a value from 0 to 100. And then the last thing we do is we convert it to integer. The reason we convert it to integer is because our comparison, our relational comparisons are integer comparisons. So we take our integer process level, and now we're going to use that for our comparisons. And if we look here, if our process level is greater than 100%, watch this, we get process level, we're 84, 98, now we're 102% full, our full our tank full goes on and everything else should stop at that point. Now we're going to compare our process level for between 75 and 100. There's our full, our slowest speed. If we bring this down between 61 and 75, there's our next speed. We bring it down even lower. We 
there we go we've got our third to the fastest speed and then finally we look here we've got our highest speed now the next thing is we have to turn the variable speed drive on if the conveyor motor is running and the tank is not full we'll turn the speed drive on right now everything is off so we'll come back up here and let's turn the let's go up here and turn the conveyor on all right now you're gonna hear the fill valves going in the background here so our conveyor motor is on it's not full the variable speed drive and then using this truth table here we can develop our outputs so watch this and we'll see our speed drive change our fastest speed and we go up it's slowing down slowing down slowing down to the slowest speed and now the motor is tank is full so it turns off the speed drive the tank empties again it starts filling it slowly empties even faster and now we're at full speed filling that's the whole tank fill process and now we talk about our jar fill if you look at here you can hear the process running our conveyor motor is running and we have our little timer set up here with the timers and you don't see timer 2 coming on because it's only on for one scan you have your one and a half second time for timer 1 your half second time for timer 2 we use those two timers timer 1 and timer 2 to create our fill valve and our gate open conveyor motor is running timer 1 is not done we use that to turn on our fill valve conveyor motor one is running timer one is done timer two not done gate open this timer two not done is an extra contact and it really does not need to be in there but you can see you've got one and a half seconds here and a half second down here that's your fill station now we come over here conveyor motor running and every time timer two is done that means one jar is filled and it's been moving through been moved through the gate valve and you can see our jar counter keeps incrementing and if you watch there you'll you saw that that for one slight moment that went to 13 it means we had 13 completed jars in the packing area so this is important that we don't reset the counter we're going to go and subtract from the counter and you'll see that in a moment there's 12 and that time it went back to one now you look at the box filling station every time the conveyor motor is running and the box full area meaning we've got 12 jars in the staging area we're going to start our two and a half second box packing cycle so it's full two and a half seconds and we missed it it just went by that fast okay conveyor motor is running the box when the box is full and whenever that timer is not done that will be our box loading so now you can see the box is loading as soon as the timer completes it will reset it'll come down here as soon as this timer completes it enables a subtraction we subtract 12 from the jar counter and we continue on at that point once we subtract 12 we'll no longer have a box full and the process continues we're subtracting 12 again because if we just hit the reset counter and there were 13 jars in there we would end up having way too many jars 
because you'll go from 12 next counter you'll have 12 in there but you'll actually have 13 the next cycle you'll think you'll have 12 in there you'll actually have 14 in there and eventually real quickly will overflow so you have to keep track of this properly that's the entire process